Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I've got a card layout for you today that has a beautiful diamond pattern, and here is a quick look at it. We're going to be making this card together, but I have two other samples to share with you as well. A card layout is also known as a card sketch, and it gives you an idea of where the cardstock or designer series paper elements can go on your card, kind of like a map for card making. You'll be able to find the card sketch, including the cutting dimensions, along with the pictures for the cards and the supplies that I'm sharing today, down in the video description below. There'll be a link there that navigates you over to my blog. And if this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click the subscribe button down below, and next to it, if you click that small bell icon, you'll receive notification when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I share a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock here, and I'm going to be using soft suede ink to stamp those petals. And those poinsettia petals come from the poinsettia petals stamp set. And I'll be using the entire bundle, which is the stamp set and the coordinating dies. You'll be able to find these in the current mini catalog. I'm going to be stamping one of the medium sized petals here. And then I have two of the smaller that I'm going to stamp just because I want to stagger these and create a fuller bloom. Since there are separate dies for these images, I'm careful to leave room between them so that I can die cut them at the same time. On that same scratch piece of paper, I'm going to use the garden green ink. And from that stamp set, I've pulled out one of the pine images. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink that up. I thought that image was going to be a little bit too dark. So I've got a scratch piece of grid paper here and I'm going to stamp off to make that a little bit lighter. And I'm going to repeat that because I want to make two of these. Now, before I die cut them, I want to add a little color to those petals. It's going to mimic the designer series paper that I'm using as well, which coordinates with this entire suite. So I've chosen the So Saffron ink and I've got a sponge dauber here. I'm going to bring that scratch paper back in because oftentimes when you load the dauber with ink, it's very concentrated in color. And I wanted to make sure that I can control that coverage. So I'm tapping off some of the color here and then I'm going to fill in the petals just very randomly. I'm not even concerned where that color will lay. Now I'll go ahead and do that to these petals as well. Now since I have that ink pad out, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp the card base. This card base is four and a quarter by eight and a half. I scored it in half right before you joined me. I'm gonna use my bone folder for a nice crisp edge. And from that same stamp set, I've chosen a greeting that says happy holidays. I'm gonna ink that up in the soft suede ink and I'm gonna stamp that here down in the lower right corner. I have my stamp and cut and emboss machine here, which I absolutely love. We are gonna be using the die, so we're gonna need platform number two on top of our basic platform, which is number one. And I'm gonna be using platform number five, which is the magnetic plate. I absolutely love this. Unlike other magnetic plates I've used in other machines before, the dies hold beautifully on here. So I'm going to position my cardstock here on the magnetic platform. And since there are separate dies, like I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and place these here on the cardstock. So I'm going to line up the first one and you can see the magnetic plate is holding it in place. And then I have my second die here. And then finally, I have the one for the pine. Once those are all positioned, I can go ahead and add my clear mat over the top and then we can go ahead and crank this through. I went ahead and I die cut the second one as well, as well as the second piece of pine. And I've got our flower images here. Let's start by putting the panels for this card together. I'm using a piece of this beautiful poinsettia plush designer series paper. It has a beautiful felt raised surface here. And I'm going to attach that to a piece of soft suede cardstock. The one thing I love about the Stampin' Up! products are the color coordination. I'll be using my silicone craft sheet here. That's going to make sure that I don't get adhesive on my work surface. Liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to it. I'm going to be very careful on where I place my adhesive on this because I don't want it to show through the vellum. This is going to get mounted on the diagonal. So the points here at the top are going to be up and down. So I'm going to concentrate my adhesive here. I have my Stampin' Co Plus and I'll just add that to the back side. This piece is two and a half by two and a half and this piece is two and five eighths inch square. And then I'll go ahead and I'll attach these two together. I've got a piece of designer series paper here. It is double sided. This one measures two and a half by two and a half and it's going to get layered on a piece of two and five eighths inch square. My last layer is another piece of designer series paper. This one measures two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And the layer is two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. 
I have the card base that we stamped the greeting on here. And I'm gonna begin with the piece of designer series paper. This is going to go on the diagonal. If yours has a pattern with a direction, just make sure that you're cognizant of that. I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over and I'm gonna add adhesive around the perimeter. Holding it on the diagonal, I'm looking to make sure that it's as centered as possible here at the top and the bottom and the sides. Once I'm happy with that placement, we'll go ahead and we'll tack that down. Our next layer is this piece of designer series paper, and I'm gonna to choose to use dimensionals for this layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add one in each of the four corners. I'm gonna use my take your pick pickup tool with the paper piercing tool attachment to help me remove those paper backings. This tool is one of my very favorites here in the studio. The putty tip will help me pick up small pieces of cardstock as well as sequins. And then the interchangeable tips have everything from stylus to a small spatula to remove adhesive, and of course that piercing tool. This now is going to get centered in the middle of this diamond shape. The next layer is the one that with the plush paper, and this is gonna go on the diagonal as well. But because I know that some of the tip is going to be close to the edge, I'm gonna make sure that I put my dimensionals more towards the inside. So I'll add one here, one here, another here, and then finally here. I wanna make sure that my card is well balanced for mailing. I'm looking now to mimic this point and this point with these two that are already on the card base. And then we'll go ahead and tack that down. Now let's go ahead and add the flower. We have the three petals here. You can add a little curvature to this with your bone folder if you'd like. So you can turn it upside down and just brace the paper so as not to rip it. And that just breaks down the fibers just ever so slightly. You're gonna do this gently. It's gonna be kind of the same motion that you do when you're curling ribbon for a present. And then I'll do the same on these just to give it a little bit of texture and life. I'll be using my glue dots to put these layers together. I've got a glue dot here and I'm gonna take the center back of this flower and press it here. Now I'd like to use my piercing tool once again to help me lift it. And I'm offsetting those petals to make this bloom look a little bit fuller. And I'll place that here. Doing the same thing now with this flower, pressing it on my glue dot. And then this time I'm gonna offset the petals I just placed and I'll attach that here. Now you can use glue dots or you can use dimensionals, whatever you prefer, but I'm gonna use a dimensional today and I'm gonna place that right here in the center. I'll place a couple other dimensionals on either side because I know I'm gonna add those pieces of pine. I'll add my flower right here in the center of this panel and then I have my pine pieces. Using my silicone craft sheet, I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive here at the bottom where I know it's not going to show. And this is going to get tucked all the way down behind here. I'm gonna leave just a little bit showing. Then we have one other here. And this one I opted to place on this side. To finish my card, I'm using one of these beautiful beaded pearls, also part of this suite. You can use liquid glue to adhere these, or in my case, I'm gonna use glue dots. And because they are sizable, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a couple to the back side. I'll use my piercing tool once again, and I'll go ahead and add that to the center of this flower to give that a beautiful 3D look. Isn't this a stunning card? Now, I promised you several others using this exact same diamond layout. This one is also a Christmas card. It uses that same plush paper, but here, instead of designer paper, I used an embossing folder. This uses the stamp from the Dove of Hope. I put my greeting down here from another stamp set called Peaceful Nativity, and I embossed it in the white embossing powder, just bring continuity to this card. A very simple but striking card. My last card is actually a thank you card, something that you can use throughout the year. This one punches out the whale as well as some water spots. And I just added a few sequins here. This one I opted to add designer series paper from that same suite of products to another layer here on the back of the card. There's a multitude of ways that you can actually decorate the panels for this diamond layout. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving copies of the current catalogs, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on catalogs to request one there. If you have enjoyed today's video, would you please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like. It certainly helps. And I look forward to having you join me next time. Have a great day.